And up next, we're talking to Sherman Yee, who is the founder and chief executive officer of VESoft. VESoft, of course, is the commercial entity behind the Nebula Graph, Graph Database. It's brand spanking new. And uh, Sherman, you have a very interesting history. And I think I want to start uh, by having you review that. You helped create the graph databases at Facebook and at the Ant Financial uh, Division of Alibaba. So that's a heck of a resume. So let's, let's talk about uh, that experience in building those graph databases before you started your own company. Uh, all right. Uh, first, uh, thank you, Tim. Uh, to give uh, to provide this opportunity. Um, so yeah, talking about the, the graph database. So I started doing the graph database when I was in the uh, in the Facebook. Uh, we I think uh, I remember we started the project back in uh, late 2011, I believe. Uh, at that time, um, we've because I mean in the Facebook, uh, of course, we know it's uh, like. A, the social graph, so it's a, it's a very natural to have a graph database to provide the, to serve the, the like a relation query uh, for the for the products. So we start thinking to do something, but because at that time uh, there's no such thing or no such uh, thing called like distributed the graph database. So we start thinking, okay, we might want to index the relations. Uh, ships between like people, right? Like a friend, uh, a French uh, friendship, all those things. Uh, so we can provide the easy access for the for the uh, for the product. So we start building the prototype. Uh, prototype. Uh, so uh, the prototype uh, at the time, the project called the Dragon. Uh, it can serve like it's a friend of friends. Uh, that's like a two two hop query. Uh, mm -hmm. We can even serve like a multiple uh, hop uh, queries, like a friend of friends photo. Uh, something like that. Uh, so um, after, I think after a year, um, the the, uh, the system goes online and starts serving the uh, the products, and we get some pretty good, pretty, pretty positive feedback. So uh, after that, like more and more like products start um, uh, basically connect to the to the Dragon system. Uh, in 2015, I left Facebook and joined the End Financial. Uh, so I was, uh, I think I was lucky at the time, because um, at the time uh, End Financial was looking for, looking, uh, looking, uh, looking to use the uh, graph database in their like uh, for for their like risk management. <clears throat> so because of my my background and my experience in the graph database in back in the, uh, Facebook, so they let me to lead the team. Uh, to do to basically to uh, spearhead the the graph database uh, deployment in end financial. Um, so first we look uh, look around uh, to find try to find some like uh, uh, open source project or even like third party commercial product. Uh, unfortunately, um, at that time there was no uh, product can basically uh, satisfy the the. The amount of data and the, the the high the high QPS of the like end the financial. So after like several months, I think uh, 2015, uh, I think May, uh, yeah, May 2015, we decide to build the system by ourselves. So we st we start uh, gathering the team and start building the, the system. Um, so internally, we call it uh, G base G A B A S E. Basically, it's a uh, as a short for the graph exploration and analytic uh, database. When you when uh, you write when you write these databases, I mean, are these all written in C or do you use Java? How do you what do you write them in? I mean, if you're worried uh, about performance, I would think not. Plus. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think you'd do it in Java. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all in C++, yes. Because of my background, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm a C++ guy. So uh, I've been working on C++ for many, many years. So. Um, so it's very natural for me to choose C++ and also considering the performance because the, the purpose to build such system is for the performance, right? So uh, I think choosing C or C++ is a natural uh, choice for us. So that brings us to Nebula. So what, what makes Nebula different from the prior two ones you've helped create? What's, what's different about it? It's, I mean, it's better, stronger, faster, and you control it. So there's that, but I assume all that, but 
Talk to me about what's different. What did you learn from the prior two experiences that you're bringing to bear with Nebula? Uh, they're a good question, actually. Um, so the, I think the main difference that came from the, the different use scenario. Uh, in the previous two companies, you can see in Facebook and in Ant Financial, the system we built basically is for internal use. Mm -hmm. And because the all basically you can think all the users are internal product team. So in that case, so basically we not only provide the technology, we not provide the, the graph database, we also maintain the system, right? We can also like provide a lot of like a consulting to the product team. But when we start doing our own stuff, like the, the Nebula graph, it's like a, as a like product to provide to the external users. Um, we cannot always to, to do these things. We cannot maintain all the system for all the users, right? Of course. And we cannot like say provide the, all kinds of like consulting work like for free, right? To all the, all the users. So that requires us to basically when we design a system, we have to design in a way to basically easy, uh, to be easily maintained and easily to basically also the, the learning curve has to be, to be smooth. Right? Uh, not like the, the internal system, like a, um, the, the learning curve is not the first thing we consider because if it's hard to learn, that's fine because we can help the, the product team to build whatever to, or to write the query as they want. But as a product, we cannot always do that. So two things we consider the, have the, the highest priority. Uh, one is, the, like I said, the, the easy to use basically. What are the what are the scalability limits of this thing? I mean, uh, you know, it, with prior it's distributed like unlimited, I would say it's unlimited. You know that when people say unlimited, you know I don't believe it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Very good. Come yeah. on, man! I've heard that a lot in my life, uh, right, but yes. but but you know, un, limits untested. But you know, you test your limits. But correct. I, I mean, what does it test? At least the, the, the scale of the graph we tested, uh, all we experienced is like a, at least have like a trillion, uh, let the, let the, let's say at a trillion level, like a trillion edges. Uh, like okay, that's pretty big. Level. Yeah. And if you wanted to do a trillion edges, like how big of a physical server cluster would be required for that? So give me an order of magnitude, you know, is that tens, hundreds, thousands of servers? What, what are we talking about? Very good question. Um, the graph actually is, uh, is a very special data, uh, data structure. If we only look at uh, the structure of the data, uh, the graph, uh, even when we talk about the trillion edges, uh, the data amount, the amount of data is not huge. Mm -hmm. uh, we can use like a couple of machines, like uh, today, you know, that the storage is, uh, is, is huge, right? We can have like a several terabyte storage easily on one machine. So if we only look at um, the skeleton or the, the, the the structure of the graph is nothing. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, only the structure of the graph uh, doesn't mean a lot or doesn't help to the business logic a lot. So we have to use what we call the property graph. Well, property graph means you have properties on nodes, on edges. So the amount of property decides how big the data is. Mm -hmm. So some graph we, we run into has like say, like hundreds of properties on each edge or each node. And that makes the, the amount of data huge. Like um, the largest of the data we, we run into is uh, close to one terabyte data, like hundreds of terabytes, on one terabyte, sorry. So it's like hundreds of terabytes. Mm -hmm. So given like, like if we have uh, like a, say, usually we use a store like one to two terabytes data on each machine. So the, the size of the cluster runs close to like a hundred machines. Mm -hmm. how, do you, um, how do you stack up against the competition in the market? So Neo4j has been out there for quite a while. Cambridge Semantics has been there for quite a while. TigerGraph is the new upstart. I can tell you from, from putting on this event, everybody is interested in graph databases. And <laughs> here you are, you know, you're like, well, I've done this. I can bring another one to market, you know. Is there is there room for that many players? And then what what's your differentiation? What's your what's your edge? Um, first, I'll say in at least in this domain, right in the graph database, um, so far there's no one dominant in this field. So there's a lot of 
basically there are a lot of rooms, yes, but you also have a lot of players, right? And uh, there's no player, at least at this time, uh, dominant the field. So, um, so that's, the, that's basically the background, right? So when we come in, uh, we, basically the advantage we have is the, the experience in a large amount of data. So when we was in Facebook, at that time, basically we processed or we, at least we experienced the largest social network in the world. So when I come back to, uh, when uh, basically come back to China, join the, the end finance, the financial, um, I kind of like a surprise to me because I found that the, the amount of data even larger uh, because the different type. It's a, a, in the end financial we deal with, we deal with uh, the, basically the transaction data, basically the, uh, so, so actually the, 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 the number of edges is way more than uh, Facebook. So uh, it's pretty much like the largest, like uh, you can think it's the it's the largest transaction network uh, in in China or per, pretty much in the world. So um, so we had we we well I think we we're fortunate to have this kind of experience. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's basically the, the one advantage we have. Um, so second uh, advantage is basically the the, the the architecture of the system, right? So basically, we start with basically, basically we from the ground up we build a distributed system. It's not like a, like for example, new 4 J, right? Uh, uh, first, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll pay a lot of respect to them, right? They are the first uh, player in this field. Um, they they start the the graph database like uh, more than decades ago, uh, but. Because it started early, so the technology kind of like a limit by, by the, the the technology at that time. So basically, it's still like it's a, they're very good on like a single machine. So they still not scale very well. Right? Um, but when we build our system, we we at the, at the very beginning and the very first uh, first day, we start thinking about distribute the system. So that's another, uh, basically yeah, that, that's the trick with these things. So, you know, early graph databases, they were great within one node. And the minute you had to traverse a node, oh my God, the performance was terrible. And then it kind of defeated the purpose of having a graph database if you had to go outside a single node. Um, mm -hmm. And everybody who's building a graph wants to go outside a single node at some point. So, so what's the trick to to making that less painful? I mean, are you, do you have a sophisticated caching algorithm between the nodes, how do you, how does this work? It seems, forgive me, but it seems like magic that it works as well as it does, um, that you can in fact scale pretty linearly across multiple nodes with a graph database mm -hmm. without huge performance problems. So, mm -hmm. so what did you do? What kind of black magic's in here? <laughs> so basically I'll say the, the magic here is how you organize the data, All right? So basically the, the natural of graph is basically you have a node, you have a, basically a bunch of like edges going out from this node and then you have neighbors and neighbors going out, right? So it's kind of a connected nodes. So in a traditional database, the, the data was organized in table, which means like the, the, all the like a, uh, same type of data, they, they put the same type of data together. Uh, but in a graph database, the data in organized in a way such like the node and its relation of the, or I say the edges of starting from this node, we put those data together. So that means when we try to traverse out, it's much faster, right? So it's kind of like a local access when we, when we go out. So even it's a, like a distributed system, but when we go out one step, it's, we always access one node, so we can go out. Interesting. So yeah. So how, how important is it that Nebula is open source. Uh, Neo4j is open source. A bunch of the other ones are not. Um, you know, it's. I'm I'm not uh, religious about open source. I think it's a fine model for software development. I think it gets it's exceedingly difficult to commercialize it. You know, Red Hat has obviously done a brilliant job of doing that. The number of companies who have done a good job making money open source is hard. You know, it's not a huge number. It's not a lot of money. But it it's you know it's okay to live on the 20% that support is worth compared to licensing. If you can do it, it's great, right? It's a, it's mm -hmm. a good living. Everybody gets paid, you know, you do great work. I'm not saying it doesn't work, but it's, it's not necessarily easier. Um, 
you know, so I, and I don't, I don't care if people license software or if it's open source, they're just two different ways to accomplish a goal. But for you, you know, you've open sourced Nebula and you're trying to create a commercial entity capable of providing enterprise support. So, you know, what's the importance of open source for you? Uh, I'll say it's a very, very important. Uh, that's basically from two aspects. Uh, first, uh, basically because the graph database is relatively new, right? Even like new 4 j it started the, the, the graph database like decades ago, but at that time, it's not, it's, it's still like a, a very limited use of the uh, graph database, right? It's not very popular. Uh, graph database only started getting popular in the last like couple of years. So you, you start seeing like, oh, uh, start hearing people say, oh, uh, graph database, I want to use graph database. But still at that time, I mean, it's still like today, more people knowing about the graph database or heard about this graph database than the people really know what's going on in the graph database and how mm -hmm. to use it. So, right. So lot, I mean, basically most of the people- Guilty as charged, by the way. Uh, you know, I, I'm just learning this stuff myself now for, for the same <laughs> reasons, because it's an interesting way to overlay on top of existing data stored in all kinds of different databases and data stores that lets you quickly traverse it, you know? And, and mm -hmm. I joke and I say, well, you know, a graph database is just where everything's already pre-joined. So of course it's easier. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, that's kind of the point, yes. you know, but. Yeah, it's a good point, actually, right? But I mean, say if you're a business, right? How are you going to apply the graph database into your business, right? People still, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, sh I should not say all the people, but still a lot of people don't know how to apply the graph database into their business. So, I mean, so for us, right? For, so we're kind of dealing with this new technology. So basically it's a, it's a very high cost to educate people, to tell people, or to teach people how to use graph database in their business, in their scenario, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the best way we think is we give user, make them and uh, let them to hand down this new technology, let them to play by themselves, right? So the best way to provide that, uh, to, to provide that way is to make the software open source. So people start using that, I um, mean, can easily can access to the, the technology, can apply the technology into their use case, into their like a, a scenario, right? So that's one way. Basically, we try to use the open source to reduce the cost, uh, basically of educating the, the users or let them by letting them letting them like uh, hands on the, the new technology to try the tech, uh, new technology. All right, so that's one reason. So uh, la last question. Um, what, what industry and customer sets are you targeting? I mean, you're a startup, you've got to focus. You cannot just try to be everyone to every, everything to everyone. That's the mm -hmm. nature of it. So Correct. where's your initial targeting to try to get your initial customer sets and, and really put the, put the software to the test? Um, yes, the, the first aspect of the, the, the basic, the customer sector we're going after is the, the internet customer. Uh, the reason we choose the internet customer is because uh, first internet customer, they're, they're willing, uh, more willing to access the new technology than like traditional like financial this, uh, institute or some other like, like uh, customers, right? Uh, so second, uh, normal, like uh, usually like uh, internet com companies or internet customers, they have like a, their technology, they have a more te technical team, right? Uh, the, for example, their development team is, a, is a, I mean, I would say a little bit stronger than like a traditional, like a, uh, like a financial institute R&D team, right? Uh, so in that way, we, we decide to choose the, the, the internet sector. Uh, as our first like customer uh, factor. All right. Well, good luck. Uh, let us know as you're doing new and different things and as you get customers who are willing to talk, we're always willing to listen. Thanks for participating in the next database platform and we'll talk to you again soon. All right, thank you, Tim.